hello guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna get to it. I can read any of your comments as you guys make comments. I can read those. And um, until then, let's just get to work and have some fun. Get some light going here. Color blocking is one of the easiest things to do. It's a little bit time consuming, but I can tell you the impact and weight, the feedback you get from your clients is, uh, is way more and you can charge more for this, even though honestly, it's not that difficult. Hi, Louise, how are you guys? All right, is that enough lighting? Do we need to add more? Let's see here. We have my nails, they color change, watch. When they're hot, they're red, which I'm cold, so it's not gonna do that, is it? <laughs> hi, Tracy. Jelly, you guys, hi. All right, so when we switch to our new group, all of our old videos are gone. They're, you guys aren't able to access them. So even though these are some from lives that I did before, I'm gonna use spring colors this time. And maybe, um, you know, sometimes you can watch a video over and over, but maybe just one other time, it just seems to make a little bit more sense or a light bulb moment comes on. So that's what we're gonna do today. So these are color blocking ones that I did prior. So we're gonna do something similar, but we're gonna tie it into a spring theme. Hi, Teresa and Joanne. Hi, Miss Susie. All right, so I am, you know, you guys know how I always use the, um, the glue dots. I'm out and I live far away from town. And so I took acrylic on these old emery boards and attached tip to them. I mean, we can make nails out of anything. You can be so creative. Okay. So let's pretend this nail has been fully enhanced. You guys know I knew I use makeup wedges. So let's pretend this nail's been completely enhanced. And if you can remove all of the tacky, then great. If not, and it's still rough and you want a smooth um, finish, then you can take matte finish top coat and apply a layer over the entire thing and remove the tacky. And what you're left with is a very smooth finish that you can layer upon. So remove the tacky layer that would be on that. And you'll have a matte finish top that anything will stick to. Color. So today I'm gonna use Gelish Brands. This one's called I'm Brighter Than You. Paparazzi Rose. These are all really bright, bright colors. This one's mint icing. And I'm honestly gonna use some colors I just wanna get rid of. They've been sitting for a while and they're getting kinda old. And when you're color blocking with glitter, it doesn't matter because uh, you're gonna cover up the color anyways. Don't be such a sour puss. Okay, let's get started and have some fun. So the fun thing, so remember this would be like a matte finish with all of the tacky layer removed, not a regular top coat, because if, if you do a regular top coat, you're gonna have to go through and rebuff it. So with color blocking, you can come up with any design you want. So wherever you put that gel polish is now going to be a wet, sticky layer. And when you apply glitter to that, it's going to stick right into it. Grab a paper towel here. So, hmm, let me go grab a more glitter. I didn't get that set up. This one's a Young Nails Imagination Glitter. It's called Crush. So before you set that in the light, create what design you want. Sprinkle on your acrylic powder, or excuse me, your glitter, really nice and fine. Tap off the excess, and it only sticks to where it's wet. And then you set that in the light. I set everything for the, the full time. Now I have a new light since I've been doing tutorials with you. I was given a gelish lamp and it sits in 30 seconds rather than a minute. It's pretty speedy fast. On this one, let's say this person just wants the tip done. 
Here's how you can do like a French glitter tip using your gel polish. Get the bead of your gel polish and dab it onto the nail where you can move it around. Get it flat out your bristles and then drag that down. Push it here. Push those the gel up above your bristles and drag that down. And you can see where your smile line's starting to be created. So I am not good about going sideways because I can never get it even from side to side. So I dab my excess here, fan out my bristles, and I push it up to where I want it. Drag it down. With gel polish, you always want to go over it twice. Sometimes we get in a hurry and we just go over it once. I need to go higher on this side here. This is where I can become way too much of a perfectionist and then I'm never completely happy with it. But guess what? We're covering it in glitter anyways. How can you not be happy with glitter? So remember, it's only going to stick to where it's wet. This is where I'm talking about you can get rid of your gel polishes that you don't use all the time because when you cover it in glitter, the glitter is going to cover that color and you're not even going to see the underlying color. So you can get rid of it. Voila, green. Isn't that pretty? That's an easy way to do a glitter tip. Rather than sitting with your acrylic or your hard gel and trying to encapsulate it that way, you can encapsulate it this way. Set that in the light for its 30 minutes. 30 minutes, my goodness, 30 seconds. You guys, I still get nervous every time I do one of these lives, and I don't know why. So this one, let's have fun. Let's do a little abstract. Why do we have to stick with straight lines? I mean, you could do a wave, whatever you want. Really lightly sprinkle it on so it gets on there evenly. Tap off the excess. So fun. So it's like super blizzard winter here. And I can tell you guys I got pretty excited. I decided an hour ago I was going to go live doing this just because I needed to add some spring into my winter. Okay, so once this has been set in the light, you can take a brush and wipe off any of the excess glitter. And it doesn't come off of your color blocked section. Then you can come in and add more. So let's make this part green. Now remember it's not going to stick back to that glitter because there's nothing wet on it. It's not going to stick anywhere else. So I can go back over and here I'm going to put it on the orange just to show you. When you tap it, it comes right back off. And then each step of the way you want to set it in the light or you're not going to be able to take your brush and rub off the excess like that. So on this one, since it's a French, you just kind of leave it. I mean, you, I could have faded the color and I could have went from one color to another. So there's lots of fun that you can do with the French like that. On this one though, this is our abstract crazy one. I could continue on and make it kind of a rainbow effect, but it's abstract. I don't want a rainbow. Let's bubble it this way. Tap off the excess. So much fun. Okay, so now we're black to this one. Remember to take your brush, wipe off any of the excess glitter. And let's bring in a yellow. So this is a yellow I kind of want to get rid of, and you guys will see. It's almost like a green. It's a sour push yellow, all right. And I have other yellows that I like better, so. I'm going to use this one up just to, to use it. No waste. A 
I'll go through and answer any questions. I'm sorry, I can't see them at the moment. I, I can see that they're there, so I know we got a good connection. I'm just kind of focused right now. So remember, once again, I'm just going to use that yellow to get rid of it because I'm going to cover it up. It's going to cover up that color anyways and transform it to my glitter. That will look so cute with some flowers and stuff on it. Set that in there white. leave this one bright and add more of the blue. So here's where it can get tricky. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a daub of the gel polish, take a dotting tool and drag it into the area because sometimes those brushes are just too big to work with on some of the detail things that you want to do. And then then I can come in with my brush and finish off that design. You don't want it too thick because it will just run all over the place. And any gel polish, it's better to layer. And this, we're just making it a wet area for our glitter to stick to anyways. So that's green. You can turn it into whatever design you want. Once again, that one's going to be pretty cute, like outlined with some flowers or something on it. And so blingy. Anytime you can use glitter in its pure form like this, you get a lot more prism than if you've encapsulated and filed over it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there for a second and scroll up and look at your guys' questions. Then we can move on to some artwork. So let's see here. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of you on. It's a good thing I didn't see these numbers or I would um, be even more nervous than I already am. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Jenny. You guys, thank you so much for joining in. Um, as you well know, I love color blocking and working with glitters. And so anytime I can get on and do something like this, I do it. Pamela says, hi, Amy. Thank you again for taking the time to do these. Oh, Pamela, you're so welcome. Hi, Zita. Um, Amy Dawson says, I love how you shake them glitters in the lid to get them tapered so it doesn't fall out in a big glob on the nail. Yes. So it's exactly that. I'm tying. If I just dumped it, then it's going to come off. So what I do is... I want, because I want to pour the, the excess of this back into the container, I tap it until I can see a little bit onto my edge. Then when I lightly tap it on the nail, I don't have as much waste. And if I do, it's going to go into the lid. I can tap that back into the, to the jar, and it's not contaminated. It's still good. So awesome, awesome. And can you imagine 30 minutes each time? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't even know why I said that. A little bit of a brain moment, I guess. <laughs> lack of brain moment. Fadella, why do you pour some glitter into the lid? So, yep, I just answered that one. Jelly says, I need to try this technique. I normally do it sideways, but give it a go. So, yeah, so if you're talking about the French, sometimes you can come in one way and the other and then use your brush to even that out, but I'm not good with that for some reason. I find if I just fan out my bristles and I work it back and forth, I can get a nice crisp, crisp, um, smile line to that and it's easier for me to do that whether I'm using gel polish glitter or whatnot it's 30 and thunder and oh in Ontario oh my gosh I think honestly we're a little bit warmer I think we're in the 30s but we had a big blizzard yesterday it was so cold Michelle I agree I love color blocking yay show a fade all right I'll show you guys a fade so a fade you're going to use more than color at once now you can do a fade over a base coat, which I'll show you that, but it will make it more pastel. And if you want to make it more solid, you could do a white first and then the fade, and it would make the colors more neon. Or you can fade your gel polish underneath it and then do the same thing. Here's the fastest way, though, because remember, 
I hate that thing that they say time is money, but it kind of is. Take your foundation, which is clear. That way your glitters are going to just be in their pure form, which glitter in its pure form like this is usually kind of pastel. So here I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this around and make it look like a cuticle right here. So remember, you dab most of your gel polish down first, pillow or push it up, and then drag it down. Drag it down. And then it used to be with hard gels, I called it pillowing, but you kind of rock your bristles back and forth to make sure you get it all the way down the side. Because sometimes when you just go straight down like that, you miss a spot or it's worth it to take the little extra time and make it smooth. While it's still wet, your base coat, then you can come in and fade. So let's fade three colors because two is fun, but three is better. So, so I'm priming it so that I can tap out a little bit. I'm gonna go at an angle on this one. Did you guys see where I made it look like it's gonna be a curved tip? Let's fade that to an orange. Overlap just a little bit because that's how the fade comes across. You guys saw me, I, well, once again, all of our videos are gone, but I actually did this with red and white a while back. And let's just go into another color. Let's just go into green. Sometimes green and pink don't make the prettiest color, but in glitter it will be fine. Tap off your excess. And we just faded from a yellow through the pink into a green. I love the shine that I get from glitters. So easy too, right? I didn't have to sit there and ombre the background or anything like that. You can actually do it. So if I did that over white, these would be neon. Set that in the light. Okay, so there's a fade for you. Um, well, geez, quite a few of you guys asked for the fade, so I answered a lot right there. You're so creative. Teresa, I've been doing this a long time. It's fun, and you have to have fun and play with it. Don't be scared of saying, well, there's no rule book that says you can't do that, because guess what? Sometimes we make the rule books. Hi, Nan. Tracy, this is great. You guys are wonderful. Hi. Um... You're gonna have to name a glitter after me, Louise. Yeah, all you can name a glitter after me. I can tell you, probably pink or coral is my favorite, but I love turquoise too. I, the fade is gorgeous. Okay, so Amanda's ready for the next step already. How would you? Okay, so here's the next step, guys. So once you have your colors on, let me find my brush. Remember, take off your excess. And the reason why is if I use my clear again on top of this, I don't want it all over my bristles and then contaminate my other base coat or top coat. Now, before we top coat these, I said that I had a bonus for nail art. So let's go to that part. However, I don't wanna dump these. So when you're gonna encapsulate glitter, you can use them and use chunky glitter if you want. Sometimes it just takes two coats to encapsulate it. With this finer glitter, it usually only takes one. Okay, remove all of the excess powder. To encapsulate, you're gonna come in with base coat because base coat is clear. Base coat can be layered on top of each other and it doesn't mess up anything. I use the same process for everything. Put my big majority on it here and then push it up to where that cuticle would be and drag it down. See how wide those bristles can get because I'm using the brush for what it's intended. I'm not just painting it on like that. Make sure to encapsulate the sides, cap over those free, the free edges. Always go over your gel polish more than once just to make sure that it's completely embedded into that glitter. Cap your free edge. And then the trick, wait. Wait for a moment for that gel polish to spread out. You'll start to see the reflection of the light be a little bit smoother. 
and then put in your light. Sometimes we work with our gel polish too fast and it comes out kind of lumpy. So wait for it to settle. If you used it too thick and you can see it going on the sides, just use your finger or something, which I don't have any on the sides. Use your finger to kind of, you know, get off those excess so you don't get a bubbled out area. And then set that in the light. Okay, Teresa says that's awesome. Oh, it's going. I've got so many glitters. Yes, 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 use them. And you're using them in pure form, so it's going to be even more beautiful. So when I do these on nails, my clients come back to me once a month. I only have a couple that come every three weeks, and I have no wear and tear at all. It's on there for the whole time. So I don't know exactly how long they would really last. I mean, I've had clients accidentally go like eight weeks because they missed an appointment and they couldn't get back in until their next appointment, and their glitter and all their edges and stuff are still on. So i um, not had an issue with that not lasting. Okay, so again on here. So here's, well, I'll show you on another one. So overlap, if you're on the natural now, overlap and go above where the line is. Because if you only go where that line is again, on the side view and when they feel it, they're gonna feel a textured feel where that line is. So if you overlap and go up a little bit more, then you're gonna notice that that line will kind of um, be leveled out with the gel polish and then it will be smooth. Work it into that polish or into the glitter. Work it. Cap over your free edge. So I tried to purposely do it extra here so that you guys can see. I don't know if it will show it or not. I tried to do extra so you can see it's going to be uneven. So if you do too much, you know that you can use, oh, a brush or something just to make sure that it's not there. Because if not, you're going to get a bubbled out effect. And then when you, you're you going to have to go back and kind of finish file those sides again. So allow this to set for a moment. I can usually tell because it's not really shown on here, but in the reflection of my light, I can usually see the reflection that lets me know that it's it's done, it's spreading out for that. Okay, so when you're doing a French, this is where I say don't, don't go back and just follow that French line again because when you can feel it, you would feel a ridge there. And this is really thin. There's a, there's a way so that that's smooth. So go up above it. So maybe start there, push it up and drag it down. And remember to brush off your excess glitter or this. See how there's still no glitter in there? And I've gone over what? This is my third nail. It's because I brushed off the excess so it's not going to get into my base coat. I used to have a, have to have a separate base coat because there was always a glitter base coat <laughs> and then my clear base coat. So drag that up a little bit higher. It doesn't have to be even because you're going to have a top coat over that so it doesn't really matter. Allow it to set. Then you can start to see the light reflect come in and let you know that it's even. And our crazy one. Long strokes. Don't get in here and do this kind of stuff. It makes it too uneven. Let your brush do the work. Rock it down the sides to make sure to get in all that glitter. I would never go straight into top coat on this because it's not smooth enough. You'll end up with almost a sugared feel. So it's worth it to uh, do a base coat, then you can do your top coat. Here's where the fun begins. So this is sticky. I can touch it. I can feel that it's a little bit, a little bit of a, maybe about the same grit as my file. But I know with the top coat it will smooth that out. But I'm a 
wee bit of perf perfectionist. So for me, I would come in with a buffer or I would come in with the soft part of a file. Now let's encapsulate it over. If you go really lightly, you can file over that and smooth it a little bit more. If you're using chunkier glitter, instead of going to this step, I would go to your base coat again and encapsulate another coat of base coat on top of that because you have a lot chunkier glitter. Now that's completely smooth. Come back in with my wedge and rubbing alcohol. Don't use acetone on that because it will already break it down. So rubbing alcohol and wipe off any of the excess powder. And I have it completely smoothed out now that I can do artwork on or I can top coat that. But I'm going to show you guys artwork. Okay, same thing on this one. I can feel it. Actually, this one's a lot smoother. I don't even need to file that one at all. And you can tell it doesn't add much thickness to do that at all. It's not thick. Now, if you had um, chunky glitter, you would see a little bit of a buildup, but that's the fun of chunky glitter. You have to expect that, right? So I have my rubbing alcohol. I'm taking off the excess tacky layer. At this point, I don't want any more glitter, so I'm going to turn this over. So the only glitter is on the nails I've done. Fill it. Once again, this one's smooth. Don't have to worry about that one. If it is, remember you can take a buffer or whatnot. Fill the sides. You know, if you need to do a little extra finish filing, like this one actually had the tip kind of thing. That's kind of rough. At this point, you can go in and you can fix that kind of stuff. And you're not going to hurt anything. Okay, so this one, and I knew when I put that on, I knew that gel polish was a little bit thicker there. And I can feel a little bit of a ridge. Not bad, but I'm going to file it. Remember, so I'm using the, the smoother side of my file. And this is a 100 by 180, so whichever one of those is smoother. The 180 side. If you file too much, you're going to notice that you're going to change your glitter. Your coloring will be a little bit different, so don't file too much. If you have a lot to file, add another base coat and then do this. Okay. So now none of these are sticky. There's a base coat on them, so I can layer on top of that without any worries. Okay, I'm going to stop and look at your questions again. Oh, Beth is on a break and she's doing this. That's awesome. I'm probably going over your break time, though, I think. Pamela says, okay, you're encapsulating them. Thought you were leaving them without. Now, you could do a sugared effect, but sugared effect will only last if you do it in a, in a top coat or a hard gel. Um, gel polish is too soft, and so your glitter is going to wear off. So if you want it to last those four weeks, I will set mine up in a top coat. Um, that's a good suggestion. Good tips for application. Um, can you do a heart with the glitter? Yes, I'll show you guys hearts. Hearts are so easy. Um, Beth, I love them. Love the fade. Yes, Michelle. Hey, Amy, I have a bunch of slick pour colors. Yes, you can use your slick pour colors to do the same thing. Now, remember, though, slick pour is a lot harder. So gel polish is flexible, and if you're going to have it over your enhancement, it's still going to um, not buckle. You know when you're, they get too thick and they get too hard, and if you're using acrylic and you're layering and layering more of the acrylic, it's going to get so hard that when they go to hit it, there's no give or flexibility. So it could create a buckle if you start getting too many layers um, on top of your product. Why am I using base coat? So Stacy, I use base coat because I can layer base coat on top of each other without buffing off the shine, and it's completely clear. So in some lines, like Gelish, because we're doing a Gelish theme here, they have one called Simply Sheer, and you could use that. It has a little bit of a pink tint to it. In D&D, they have one called Clearly Pink, but they're never clear. So the only clear that I can find that I can layer without having to rebuff it is base coat. So I use base coat. Um, Beth, did I miss something? Did you cop the... Nope, I have not top coated it yet because we're going to do some bonus nail art. Um, base coat, yes, base coats, it's, you can use so much extra with base coat that I don't think, I think we underestimate the power of base coat. Um, Amy says, oh gosh, 
it says, I've seen where you can very lightly tap the glitter in with a fan brush after you've sugared it into a wet layer before curing and it helps with the roughness, but it doesn't, but it isn't as flat as when you burnish it in. Right. So with glitter, you can't, I don't really burnish it in with the glitter because each time you do that, you'll either change the glitter to, if it's a hollow glitter, you're going to change it to the hollow effect. So the prism of it's going to be a little bit different, but burnishing is really for chromes. Um, with glitter, you want to sprinkle it on and allow that prism to be the loose glitter like that. And that's where you get to keep its sprinkles or its sparkles, I should say. Sometimes I use a brush, but my gel polish is wet when I sprinkle it on. So if I use a brush when it's wet, it's gonna move around my gel polish and then it's gonna make it uneven and move around my glitter and not be a, a lay, an even layer. But on some gel polishes like Gelish, you can cure it in the light. Say you have the whole nail burgundy like my nail. I could cure it in the light. Then I can come on that tacky layer and I can use a brush and come on and it won't move my gel polish around. And that's a good way of doing an ombre if you're doing it over a gel polish color. Now, if you're doing it over clear, then I would do it this way just because I can do it all in one step and save myself some time afterwards. Hi, Carrie. You guys, Carrie's on here and Carrie's doing Tech Talk Live with me on Sunday. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday here in the States, but you can join in. Girls can take their little halftime show and do nails and talk about other things as well. Oh, my UPS guy is here. Hi. Hi. You can just leave it there. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. And it says, I'm just leaving school. So you guys can always watch the replay of this, and you can save this into your saves, and then you can have it forever. Caroline says, do you remember using base coat remember, regardless of brand, or is it just a particular brand? Nope. Today I, j I just pulled out Jealous just because I have it, but um, I use... I've used Young Nails, I've used Jellish, I've used d and I've used Shellac. You can use, as long as you have a good um, enhancement, you can use any base coat that you want. Makes sense. Good, good, good. All right, so I think I'm caught up on all the questions. Likewise, if I miss anything, I'll come back and let you know. So since I have gel polish out, I might as well do my art using the gel polish too. You can use, like, Magic Gel just sent me some... Um, oh my gosh, they're really good. The packaging it, whoop, is so cool. Look, I got Magic Gel. This is the box that it comes in. It's so cool. And it's gel paint. So I can use this like a gel polish. It's very highly pigmented. Definitely probably a one coat. And you can use it for art and all, everything all in one. I have not played with this yet. But I'm going to. Okay, for sake of today, I already have gel polish out. If you have a tile or a glass top table like I do, just put it right on your table. Mm, I don't know what I'm doing yet, so let's just make a rainbow on my desk. And that one's a different color. So, somebody wanted to see hearts. Let's do hearts on this one. And in fact, I'll do that in pink and white. I don't know how much it's going to show up on that glitter, but let's see. Um, oh, well, where did you buy that? So, Karina, my magic gel I got given to me as a gift because I do these lives, and she wanted to know if I've ever used it. So her name is Candice, and um, I did get online and look at their website, and oh my gosh, they have all kinds of products. So um, magicgel.com, I think is what it is. I'll put it in the links, and, and you guys can look it up from there. Yeah. I don't, I think it's originally from Canada. I think you're right on that, Teresa. Okay, dotting tools. To use a dotting tool, there's, here, let me move the camera over. It might get a little shaky. It's important, no, I'll turn that back on, to know that when you use it as a dotting tool, the very first dot that you get is going to be your biggest. But the fun part is, is that you can keep dotting with the same one, and it will naturally taper down for you. I'll, here, I'll do it on a small end. So depending what fine line and what size heart, what size flower petal you're going to do is going to depend on the size of your dotting tool. 
So you want hearts. I'm going to use the big end. And I do one dot, two dots, and I drag them together. And you get a heart. Now, I can say if I ever go to get on paper to draw a heart, you know, I have to still draw out like that. I can't ever get it right. <laughs> Never comes out as easy. And of course, on a pencil, I can't sit there and do two dots and drag them together. That's multicolor, this one. Two dots and drag. So now I'll come in and make little ones. Yeah, the glitter is kind of overpowering these colors. I think a purple that's as bright as that pink would look good on here as well. Here, I'll just do another big one here. Hearts and glitter. It's all done in gel polish. So you'd set that in the light and then top coat it, and then that one would be done. Here's the fun part. If you get all the way done and your client goes, oh, I don't know if I like that. You have not set this in. We've encapsulated the glitter. I can take rubbing alcohol and very easily wipe it all off and then do something different. So that's the reason why I like to use gel polish and layer it out like this. So if I'm layering and like, you know how they do, like Layla does like the Disney faces, you'll do a section and then set that in the light. So that way, if you mess up on the next section of that, you can wipe it off. So let's do a big heart, even bigger than my dotting tool. I'm gonna make it really big. Drag it down. And why stop there? Why not put a little white into it and marble? Make this heart marbled. Then I could take like a dark purple or something and I can put little dots all the way around it and I can write B mine in there. You can do whatever it is that you want on these. Okay, so I'll go ahead and set that one on. This one Let's, I don't have a plan for it yet, but I'm going to use a striper, kind of outline it a little bit and give it a little extra spirals to it. Um, I just want to make sure I haven't missed any. Oh my gosh, Beth, I know. I tell people, you know how they say that I don't own the rights to the music? <laughs> I don't own the rights to the ticking clock in the background. <laughs> Okay, so striper brushes, I still, I've been used to doing it like this, but you can do an external one and use your gel polish or whatnot, but I've been so used to doing it this way. So the first point of contact is going to be your biggest, and then the more you work with your striper brush, the smaller the line's going to get and be tapered. So do you see how it tapered it down naturally? And I can tell you it kind of gave me a heart design, so I'm going to go with it, and I'm going to bring this in. And I'm going to make this half of a heart, even though it wasn't really my intention to begin with. Once again, if you make a mistake, I can come in and just hopefully, nope, it won't do it. So I'm going to take off the whole thing before it dries. So let's backtrack. I'm going to start it this way. I'm using the very tip of the brush because I'm using it as an outliner. And now I'm transforming this where I'm not going to have the heart anymore. <laughs> Making it even different again. <laughs> because Okay, so I'm going to grab a different dotting tool. My mama bought me this one. It's totally blinged out. It has a little bit of a, a little bit of a bald edge. And I'm going to come in. 
So the first point of the dot, remember, is going to be your biggest. And then I can drag and make kind of, I don't know, fun extra flares out of this. The possibilities are endless. My clients love abstracts, so I can say I do a lot of this kind of artwork in my salon. And then, with that really fine point dotting tool that we used earlier, I can come in and add little dots and frame it in even a little bit more. So much fun. And it's not that hard. You just guys, you have to play around with your products and find new ways to, to use them. Now, what would be fun about this one is I'd set this in the light. That white, I know, has a little bit of a tacky layer when it's done. So I could add foiling onto it, which might distract from my glitter. I could add a rhinestone into like the center of right here and turn it into more 3D. I could sprinkle acrylic powder into the white and make it a raised looking nail. I could add more glitter in it and give it a sugared effect. There's so many endless possibilities that you guys can do with this stuff. And it's not hard. It's just understanding how to layer it. Um, good morning, Sharon from Australia. Karina says, when I use a small nail art brush to make curves, as I get to the curve, the brush seems to flick out and then make it very messy. Do you have any tips on that to make it? So that's the reason why I still use these. Look how long this brush is. And it's very flexible. Like you can bend it. Let me try to do that again in the camera. See how you can bend it? So therefore I can tend to do longer strokes and spiral it around because the brush is more flexible. On the short brushes, like I have a really fine detail brush like this, it doesn't give as much flexibility because it's a lot shorter. You could still do it but your paint's gonna run out because it's not gonna be able to hold as much paint and you just have to sit there and layer it through. So I still use the other one just because that's what I've practiced with for all these years and that's just what I use. So speaking of which, let's have a little fun with lines on this one. So let's outline it. So you guys have seen the ones that I've done before, like with that. So it's kind of similar, outlined. You can make it look like an envelope and put a little heart on there. You know, like you could have this pink, red, and white, and like a little purple heart, like it's sealed with a kiss or something, or put a kiss on it. Um, the same design, you can bring in and make it look like patchwork, and you can have little dots across hair and little hearts and stuff and turn that into a Valentine's Day design but I'm going to turn this into an abstract spring design. I'm still going to outline it though, just because. And instead of keeping it like that, why not overlap the lines? It's amazing how it can change the design altogether. Now I have a more geometric of design. Kind of got a little heavy handed on that. But likewise, I could wipe it off if I really didn't like it. Now, this might be a lot going on a nail, but let's do it anyways. Let's add more. So, in fact, I'm going to do a little flower, kind of like a dot daisy look, you know? I'm going to use this dotting tool. It has a little bit of a bulb on it. And I start with my dots first. Just so I know that my flower will be even. And then you drag them in. It makes a little flower. So dart with the dots.
drag them in. This one needs something. I don't think the orange will show up on it, and honestly, orange over over green tend to make a brown. So I don't want to. I'm too lazy to get up and grab another color. <laughs> so I'll just do white again. But just know that you could do a different color. And drag those in. Then you can come back in and put centers in them. Or you could do rhinestone centers, whatever it is that you want. You could add more dots. I mean, this is pretty abstract. I have clients, so I would definitely do this, but kind of crazy. Layer it out and just have fun. That would be a fun accent nail and have the rest of them like just orange tipped or something and have this one just be a little extra crazy. So that's done in gel polish, the hearts and the, I mean the flowers and the dots are, so I have to set that in the light. The other one is just the line brush, so that just needs to air dry, and then I would top coat that, and then that one would be done. So this one, it needs to be spruced up. It needs flowers for sure. So let's do, let's do double colored flowers. Since the background of that needs some extra sprucing. So I'm gonna use the big end of the dotting tool. I'm gonna do my dots first where I want my petals to be. I'm gonna make them big. And we're gonna double color it, so I'm gonna come in just below it with the orange. Do the same thing. Kind of marble them a little bit and drag it in. Marble it around, drag it in. And I have double. If you want it to fade a little bit more, you could marble that. So where the two lines come together, you could just marble it a little bit. Or the two colors come together. My words aren't working today. Here's another added flower thing that you can do, as I've seen where they take their dotting tool and just kind of come up through the center and back out. Or you can use a brush for this. Just adds a little extra. Now if you're really brave, you can continue on. Me, at this point, I would probably would set this on the light to cure it because I wouldn't want to mess it up. But I'm going to be brave and say, then you could come in with white dots or just because I don't want to get up and grab another color like purple or whatever colors you want to do. Adds a center to it. Okay, so I'm going to set this on light and show you guys one more step. You can easily see how you can make that a sunflower. You can add in more petals in between, but I'm going to go one more step with this. So I'm going to set that on the light to cure it. Oh, remember that heart? So once again, I would top coat that. In this case, I don't know if this will show up. Let's just see. You can add dots around it and turn it into more of a frilly looking Valentine. Oh, that made it pop a little bit more. Well, that's gel polish, so I better set that in the light too. Okay, so back to this one. I'm going to take my, my striping tool here. And I know we can't turn our client's hands around, but I actually have to 
really maneuver my client a little bit on this one to get in the right angle. All right, better stay in the camera. With the dotting tool, I can lightly come around and outline these petals, and it gives it a flouncy, flowery look. You could do this with green, just in a couple spots and add flares and give it the idea that it's, you know, leaves. It's amazing how one more step can transform a design from blah into raw. I really like to do this flower with like red and white and then put a stone in the middle. It's so pretty. But it's a nice fun spring flower. I don't know what the name of that flower would be, but. All right, so this one would be top coated and completely smooth. It's not rough at all because it's been encapsulated using base coat. Let me turn this back this way. This one, same thing, just top coat over that. So look at these designs we came up with so quickly. And whether you do that on one nail or you do it on all 10, it doesn't take that long, but it's understanding your product and knowing how to layer it and using base coat. And, um, and it's so much fun. The, it's, the possibilities are endless because we are artists. So thank you guys so much for joining live. I'll quickly see if there's any more questions on here. Lovely. Can you show how to do a kiss, like sealed with the kiss design like I mentioned? I will show you how to do a kiss, but I can tell you I cheat and I use a stamp. Um, hey, Amy, I struggle with doing stars. Okay, I'll show you a star. Um, flowers. What? Oh my God, you made my life easier in just 45 seconds I've been watching. Yay, Anita, that's what this is all about. I, I, I love that. Um, how long do I cure my polish for? You need to cure it with the, the agreement to the, to the gel blush. So I'm using a gelish lamp with the gelish, and then right now the max of the lamp is 30 seconds. So on these ones I cured 30 seconds. Um, I don't ever flash cure anything because I want a complete cure and when I'm working with it and I wipe off each layer and wipe off the excess I don't want it moving around so I truly cure every step of this the full time the 30 seconds or the one minute into my light Amy's flower yay do you even know there's such a thing as striping striping gel oh it's not gel it's just striping paint and it comes with the striper they're called stripers and um, you, I use this a lot. Sometimes I'll take this out because I love these brushes and I don't have a brush that's this long and this fine. And I'll wipe it off and then I'll drag it through my gel paint and I use it that way because I'm so used to using a brush like this that it's, um, I sometimes use the brushes out of these just to use them in the gel paint. You feel more empowered. Kim, that's huge. Who to choose? Yes, um, I'm doing a all about the toes class. If you look in the events, I think it's next week. I just finished today doing a class. This is why I do it on my glass, guys. I can wipe it right off with alcohol. Um, all about the toes class. It's in the events. It's going to be from prep, how to build out a toenail if you need to. Um, it's not a pedicure. It's just all about rock star toes, adding glitter like this onto toes and doing some artwork and how much to charge for it and all of that. So yes, I do have that class coming up. If you guys have suggestions for classes, let me know because um, I'll put a class together. Um, I did a one-on-one -on -one today with Jay and, um, and we just customized the class for her. And so she learned the genre technique. She learned some of the color blocking. I mean, we just make it up for that person and it's really nice. And it's done just like this, except for both on the screen so we can talk to each other. You can see what I'm doing, and I can see what you're doing, so we can troubleshoot that way. I love doing a one-on-ones like that. And then when we do it live like this, it automatically saves it, so you can save it and continue to watch that workshop over and over and over again. Yes, yeah, Sally's Beauty Supply has these stripers. Most, um, gosh, most supply stores have different brands and stuff like this as well. Thank you for doing this video. I can't wait to watch it again and again and again. Yes, and wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up showing you how to do a star and 
lips. Now I can say I usually do lips with a, a, a stamp just because one, it's easier. And you know how you can get the fine line of the lips and how plump and cool they can be? I never really like my lips as much as the stamping lips, but I'll show you how I do mine. Okay, so I'm gonna use the dotting tool that has a little, little bit of a ball on it. Okay, here's the star. You do a dot, drag it up to the side, to the side, down, and down. And you can do them different sizes based on the size of your dotting tool. So I'll try to make a big one. Make a big circle. Drag it up. Now it's bigger, so it's going to take me a few times to get it higher out there. Out. Out. I'm going to need to get more gel paint on there. Down. And down. Sometimes my stars will get a little wonky, but you know what? My clients tend to like them better that way. They don't want them perfect. They like the like one line longer than the other kind of thing, like they're more twinkling. And as soon as you're happy with it, set in the light so it doesn't continue to move around. Of course, the more I mess with these, the more I mess them up, so I'm gonna stop there. So that's how I do my stars. Let's wipe that off. So, Let's take this one and make it look like it's sealed with a kiss. Try to hold on to it. So for my lips, I kind of bring up two arches, like, you know, the high point of the lips that is always so sexy. Drag them out on the sides like you're making mountains. I might have to do this on a plain one so you can see. Now here's the center of the bottom lip and then drag it up to meet the sides of that top lip and then bring it down to be that pouty look. You could fill in the center, but it might, you know, for lips, it kind of makes it look like a rounded heart. So sometimes they leave the center open just so that you have that kissy look. Can you see those lips? Add a little bit more in here. And the fun thing is, is if you decide you don't like it, you can wipe it right off and it doesn't mess with any of the glitter and any other things that you've done. Sealed with a kiss. Now, if you let, I've seen where people will let it set a little bit and then they'll come back in with their fine one and they'll draw those little lines. I never can get them right. In fact, I don't like that either. So me, I'd stamp it. They have some really cute stamped ones too. You can stamp it in colors. All right, guys. Well, I'll answer any questions afterwards, but thank you so much for coming live with me. I don't know who's coming next. If you guys look at our events, we, oh, we've been posting the events and then we're gonna copy these links and post them back up into that event so that if a year from now you're like, I remember seeing something with spring colors on that, you can go back to that event and the link for this video will be in there. We're definitely trying to be more organized and um, we'll take any suggestions that you may have because we're kind of new at this too. And there's so many great options that you can use with Facebook that um, I don't think we know the fullest extent of how we can use it, but we're going to figure it out. So thanks for joining live, you guys, and have a great day.